What's up guys, Luke from 8-Bit Plus back again and welcome to the podcast. Uh, this is a thing that we're kind of experimenting with in the YouTube channel and it's supposed to be kind of a, a quick little review of the week type of deal. Um, if you guys are liking this, if you like this kind of vibe, vibe you're getting from this video, as we get going, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. But without any further ado, let's get right into it. So uh, there's a few things that I want to talk about today. And uh, obviously the first thing that we, uh, we should talk about is today we actually had the PlayStation State of Play. Uh, it's uh, basically a live update, sort of like a Nintendo Direct. And uh, we had a lot of games shared. And kind of the unique part about the State of Play today was it was uh, very much so a bunch of different, uh, for, a, for a bunch of different consoles and platforms as far as the PlayStation ecosystem goes. So it wasn't a uh, very uh, PS5 heavy, although there were a few PS5 games shown. And to go over each and every one, uh, this podcast would basically be completely monopolized by it. So um, we're not going to do that, but I do have a few games that I kind of want to talk about. First one is Crash Bandicoot. It's about time. It's Crash 4, guys. Super excited for this one, especially after the uh, developer kind of went over the game and explained some of the uh, extra modes and, uh, you know, clarified some stuff as far as microtransactions. I know a lot of people were talking about uh, Crash Bandicoot 4 possibly having microtransactions. No! Um, but actually, um, they clarified that there will be no microtransactions you will be actually able to uh unlock all these things and uh gotta say crash bandicoot is gonna be a day one purchase for me this game is beautiful it's about time <laughs> it's about time uh uh is uh that we get a new crash bandicoot game uh true to the original trilogy uh which is where it's at uh, so super excited for that one. Uh, we got Hitman VR. Um, so it's Hitman 3, but there's a VR mode included. And I'm not sure if they were like, like if they misspoke or like miss, uh, announced, but I'm pretty sure it said that the original trilogy of Hitman will be fully playable in VR. Uh, wishful thinking here. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but uh, definitely sounds interesting. I'm not a Hitman fan. I've actually talked about it uh, on on the channel before. I, I just never really got into Hitman. Too much of the hiding of bodies. Um, I can take a body out stealthily, you know, Last of Us Part Two type deal, but. I'm not very good at uh, hiding the body so it doesn't get found. It always gets found, and I always fail in those games. But a VR mode is pretty interesting. I just need to get another PSVR. I sold my PSVR, and I have an HTC Vive now. Um, so hopefully this game comes out for PC VR. If not, I might need to be rocking another PSVR. Um, the next game was The Pathless, and this was a beautiful game that hit me by surprise very indie game i'm not sure what the studio was uh that made it but you're basically an archer and you are uh hitting targets and it's not based on aiming it's actually based on timing which is kind of cool and it opens up the um opportunity for a more fast paced type of gameplay um, uh, so because your aiming is not like, you know, it's not physical aiming. It's actually uh, based on timing. So you can focus on other things like jumping in the air and stuff like that. A uh, game looks, looks absolutely beautiful. I love it. I love the art design of it. Uh, the music is great and the gameplay looks really captivating and uh and awesome I'm, I'm catching some breath of the wild vibes of course um with uh, uh some of the stuff that they showed us but i cannot wait to see more on that one uh the next one is hold on i'm gonna try and say it anno mutationum anno mutationum and anno mutationum is a 2d uh a 2d city 
uh, like hack and slash, like it's like a kind of kind of like a retro aesthetic, but you're in this city and you're like, uh, I guess you're taking out, um, you know, different enemies and stuff like that. Love the art style. The game looks like it's right up my alley uh, as far as like, uh, you know, 2D hack and slashes go. Um, uh, side scrolling. So looks really cool. We didn't see much, but what we saw, I do like. I, I can't wait to see more. Uh, next game is The Pedestrian, and The Pedestrian is a cool one. Uh, I, it's very unique kind of design. Basically, you're the stick figure that is found on traffic signs, right? So, like, you know, your, your crosswalk traffic sign, there's, like, the dad and the kid crossing the crossing the street so basically you're that guy <laughs> that's the main character and you have to progress through the city and like in rooms and like in the on the streets and you have to progress through these traffic signs and solve puzzles while you do it it's very like minimalistic as far as like you know gameplay it seems like it seems like it's really straightforward but I'm kind of a keen to that right now. Like I'm I'm kind of a keen to just getting back to games being video games, um not real life simulators. And you know, that's something that I really love about the next generation. Maybe I'm just paying more attention to it. Maybe I'm having like a fatigue with those other types of games, like the more realistic type of, types of games, and I want to see new things, but I've actually noticed that there's a lot of, you know, uh, 3D platformers, 2D games, games with uh, just like, just kind of going like going wild with the art design and like kind of abstract kind of things. And, you know, it's not, doesn't necessarily have to look like real life. It's just, it's it's gorgeous it's beautiful in its own right so i'm just like looking forward to i know this sounds weird colorful vibrant games like that's the that's the word of the of the rest of my year man colorful vibrant games after i fi finish ghost of tashima <laughs> but uh yeah I, so super excited about that and then two more uh uh, Temtem, it's a Pokemon clone, basically. Um, hopefully, they can do something with this game that's, like, uh, captivating and something that, uh, you know, um, that people want to see. Uh, it's tough making Pokemon clones because people are like, but it's not Pokemon, you know, and, and there's, I, I know everyone loves Pokemon and I do too. Um, but I do have an opinion on game freak. I think game freak, come on guys, game freak has gotten lazy, man. They need competition. Uh, this game looks like it could offer up some, uh, healthy competition for game freak to step up their game. Uh, so hopefully we see, uh, hopefully, hopefully we see Temtem, uh, a little bit more about it. Uh, looks very much like a Pokemon game, but hopefully it, uh, uh has some innovative, innovative thinking and just like just new ideas because Pokemon needs a refresher and they need that healthy competition. So Temtem, Temtem for the win. Oh yeah, and then one more thing with Temtem, uh, it is going to be an online game, like I'm almost like an MMO of, uh, so an MMO Pokemon clone. Um, sounds pretty cool. I, I don't know. It, 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 I might, I might even stream it. I, I, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, and then they finished off like the last ten minutes of this, uh, of this announcement with Godfall. godfall dude what like what like why was anyone asking for this like no dude like godfall i mean it looks okay but it's just it's a clone dude it's a darksiders game it's warframe it's like it's like we've had it so many times and these medieval hack and slash where you got the superpowers and you're doing spin slashes and you're jumping in the air and you like basically float and you like hack and slash on your way down. It looks cool, but it's like, meh, you know? It's like, uh, okay, another one. Maybe it's just not my thing. Please let me know in the comments if I'm just crazy. I, I, I don't know. Um, so that was basically the, uh, the state of play today. Uh, overall opinions, I thought it was 
cool. It was solid. I would have liked to see more on the PS5, to be honest. But there was a few games in here that were like diamonds in the rough that I was like really happy that I watched it. And then there was other games like um, Godfall and like uh, what was that uh, that bug game where you eat the bugs and you get you know bug snacks. More information on bug snacks. Ooh. You know, that game looks really weird. Um, and then just like some anniversary stuff. I mean, I know they have to throw some of that stuff in there to kind of make it a complete uh, event. So it is what it is. But overall, I thought it was a solid event. Um, it just uh, wasn't, there wasn't anything that was like really wow. But there were some cool uh, extras like um, just seeing more on the Crash Bandicoot series as well as uh, Hitman VR mode was really cool. And then Pathless looks absolutely gorgeous. And then some other interesting games just for us to see. Uh, it was good. It was good overall. Um, so moving into the next topic, um, uh, this is something that I've been hearing a lot in my YouTube feed and probably you have been hearing too. And it's something that I've actually been screaming about uh, for probably the about like the last year. And, and it's something that I have anticipated. It always happens with these big companies when they have a great generation. This happens. And it's PlayStation. Is PlayStation being anti-consumer? Um, if you haven't heard yet, they basically just said that the PS5 is not going to support the DualShock 4 and the reason was not really fair okay like it would be really easy for uh, for the PS5 to support the DualShock 4 it wouldn't be hard have developers uh uh add it into the code if the game is really dependent on that new DualSense controller which is probably then that's fine. But most games are not going to be really dependent on that dual sense controller. And you can use things like the trackpad to make up for that. And the gyroscope and the accelerometer and all the crazy tech that is packed into the DualShock 4. You could totally rework that to work with the PS5. But Sony says no. So if you got a couple of extra DualShock 4s laying around, guess what? You can't use them unless you're playing a PS4. Uh, whereas on the other side of the coin, and I don't mean to do this, I'm just, I'm just saying the other side of the coin, we have a new Xbox coming out. All of Xbox One controllers are compatible with it. Whoa! So it can be done. All right, cool. You just got to be a little more consumer friendly. So we got that, and then we also had a weird move on Sony and uh, Marvel's part. Um, Spider-Man is exclusive to the PS4. Um, uh, or the new Marvel Avengers game, Spider-Man will be exclusive to the PS4. Um, there won't be any extra anything from what we've heard. It's just uh, skins and Spider-Man only on the ps4 not a game not a game on the ps4 exclusive you know not a skin a character a character is exclusive in a game that's on all different systems only on the ps4 is spider-man available and a lot of people love spider-man spider-man's probably my top three as far as marvel heroes and Spider-Man is not going to be on Xbox and not going to be on PC just because. Because Sony gave some money to make it happen. And I don't like that um, at all. Um, now, if, if it was a little different, if it was like Spider-Man is on PS4, Iron Man is on Xbox, and who cares about PC... Um, PC just gets, you know, uh, I, I don't know, maybe PC gets one of their, you know, one other, uh, exclusive character. 
it'd be kind of like a Soul Calibur situation uh, back in the day when we had uh, Soul Calibur 2 come out and Link was on the GameCube uh, and we had, who do we have on Xbox? Spawn! Dude, come on, Spawn fans, uh, was on the Xbox and then we had uh, some dude from Tekken. I don't know his name. I'm sorry. Uh, hate me. The dude from Tekken was on the PS2. That was kind of cool. It gave you a reason to play all three versions of the game, but you didn't necessarily have to, and you didn't feel like you were getting gypped, okay? With this setup, I feel like I'm getting gypped, okay? I'm not getting Spider-Man. I'm not trading Spider-Man for Iron Man. I'm just not getting Iron Man, or I'm just not getting Spider-Man. But I'm paying the same retail price for the game. I'm paying $59.99 for this new Marvel game, but I'm not getting the entire game. Hmm. Interesting choice. I don't know. Uh, but what I do know is what I've been telling you guys last year, and that's that when a console company, when a company has a good console generation, their heads inflate and they think they can get away with stuff. They think they can just say, eh, we're not going to do that anymore because we want more money, you know? So, so I already saw this coming. Am I going to not get the PS5? I'm still going to buy the PS5. I'm still going to play their games. But as I've said before, and as I'll say again right now, I got my money on Xbox. If you're not sure what system you want to get, buy or, uh, uh, um, you know, weigh your options, of course. You know, if there's a game that you really like on PS5, maybe that could be an option. But my opinion to you, my advice is buy an Xbox. You're going to save a lot of money. You're going to get a lot of cool exclusives. Maybe not right away, but... As the time as time goes on and you're gonna get a lot of consumer friendliness okay so moving on into other news uh, Xbox online environment is free this weekend I just found out actually uh, today that the uh, Xbox online environment is uh, going to be free uh, for anyone that owns an Xbox One, speaking of consumer friendliness, let me introduce you to Xbox. The next four days, Xbox online environment is free. Game Pass is free. Online gaming is free. If you have an Xbox One, dust the dust off of that thing. <sighs> Blow the dust off of your Xbox One because you haven't played it in a while because there's not a ton of exclusives, I will admit. Um, 100% I will admit, and I'll hold them to the coals for that too. Um, but they're changing it. They're, they're trying, you know, they're trying to woo us back in. And I like to be wooed back in as a consumer. I like to be given goodies, you know, an incentive to use their platform. Um, it's a lot like my cell phone, cell phone service, and I'm not going to digress too much, but the reason why I'm a T-Mobile customer is maybe not lately, but... Uh, early on, the reason why I became a T-Mobile customer is because they were very consumer friendly. They had T-Mobile Tuesdays. They had the unlimited plans. They had the whole uncarrier thing. And like, there was so many things that they were doing that was consumer friendly. And I was like, hey, that's cool. I like that they're trying to be consumer friendly. They're trying to be transparent. They're trying to reshape the mold a little bit. Give me as a consumer a better overall deal i'm gonna become a t-mobile customer um so when companies do that i like it i like freebies i like goodies everyone likes goodies it's awesome so if you have an xbox one dust uh uh, uh dust the blow off of that thing and <laughs> And go and have fun for the weekend. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to find on Game Pass. If you haven't been on there in a while, there's 200 plus games. And there's some good stuff on there, man. Go check it out. Play some online games. Enjoy yourself. 
Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about is Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Uh, was announced for the Nintendo Switch. I'm super excited for this. Um, I, I I mean, Nintendo needs more stuff. They need, like, the last six months have been all about, uh, you know, PlayStation and uh, and Xbox. So Nintendo needs uh, some, some games, exclusive games, some stuff outside of, okay, we ported another two-generational game over to your Nintendo Switch. You can now take Borderlands on the go. Yay! Like, like I don't care about playing first-person shooters on the go. I, I just don't. It doesn't make sense. Like, those games are the types of games that I like to sink into. You know, I like to... I, I don't want to be an airport playing borderlands i just don't what i do want to do is be in the airport and be jamming out on some hollow knight you know that sounds cool to me uh maybe some paper mario about you know or yeah maybe some paper mario um you know that type of stuff uh where i can just pick it up play it put it down walk away pick it up again and i'm not like what was i doing so Excited for Pikmin 3. That's really good for uh, for the Nintendo Switch. Um, I haven't checked the sales of the Nintendo Switch lately, but I know that they are absolutely blowing the doors off of things, and uh, they deserve it. Um, Nintendo deserves it. Outside of their Joy-Con issues, we had like three Joy-Cons come in like in the last two days uh, that have Joy-Con drift, and Nintendo doesn't seem to really want to do much about it. Um, I've had... I've told multiple customers call nintendo they'll take care of you they had a class action lawsuit filed against them and they still end up at my store so maybe they're taking forever to fix these joy cons i have no idea but outside of that nintendo made a really awesome product in the switch um i love my switch it's an absolute sweet console and especially when you mod it and uh, I just, I love the exclusive games on it. Um, I love the uh, the portability of it. I love that there's three separate ways to play. Great system. Really happy for Pikmin 3 to be on it. But that's it for this week, guys. Thank you so much for joining me in this first ever podcast. Uh, I hope you like it. If you got value out of this video, do me a big favor and smash like as well as subscribe with bell notifications turned on for more content just like this. But until next time, Luke from 8-Bit Plus signing out and I'll see you in the next one. God bless.